Electra, how'd you like a little treat? Oh boy, those are delicious. It's a temptation for a little kitty. And speaking of kitties, we're gonna see a big kitty. Well, at least once upon a time, Tawny was the MGM lion. And today you can visit Tawny's remains at the Los Angeles Pet Memorial Park. And it's a great place because there's lots of famous animals that are interred there. Then later on, we're gonna be seeing a real famous person. That's Tiffany Lonsdale, who's been in movies, on TV, she was in G.I. Joe, and she's got a rescue dog named Hugo. Hugo is gonna talk with Laura Stinchfield, the pet psychic, and we're gonna find out just what's on Hugo's mind. Then Santa Barbara Humane is gonna take us on a hike with your dog. We're gonna find out the ups and the downs of hiking with your favorite pet. Do you wanna go on a hike? We'll find out. Stay tuned, we'll be right back with more Animal Zone. So today on Animal Zone, we're here at the Los Angeles Pet Memorial Park with Stacy Tanner, who is the park manager. And um, this is a very special place because it's been here for a long time and there are a lot of important animals that are interred here. So Stacy, tell me a little bit about the history. When did this first open? Uh, in 1929, it was founded by a Dr. Eugene Jones. He was the veterinarian to the stars, okay? And when the animals passed, he thought that they should have the same dignity, the same, you know, send off as, as people do. So he started the idea of a pet cemetery. And so when you go out there and you see all the famous people that have had their pets buried here, it makes sense. Uh, so we, as I said, from 1929 and onward, the golden age of Hollywood, I've really highlighted out there mm -hmm. uh, with the yellow flowers. So he, he ran the place when Calabasas was just a a center of you know dirt in the middle of nowhere. So in the 80s, the, uh, it, the land was taken over by the SPCA. Mm -hmm. And subsequently, they began selling it off. So- How uh, big was it originally? I wanna say it was probably 12 to 13 acres. We're down to 10. Right. Um, so a group, God bless them, a group of animal lovers um, who have their pets interred here you know, said, no, no, not on our watch. That's not gonna happen. So they created SOFI, which stands for Saving Our Pets History in Eternity. Oh. They lobbied Sacramento, it took them three years. They did fundraisers. They had to raise all this money in order to get Sacramento to pass a law that says you can't touch a pet cemetery just like a human cemetery. So not only our pet cemeteries, but the others that are in the state too are protected wow. in perpetuity. So you can't, there won't be a Starbucks over there, 7-Eleven. <laughs> right. yeah. So, and that's why we're still here, you know, almost a hundred years later now because of them. Pe you have people who come here and uh, they visit their pets, uh, maybe lay, lay flowers at their oh, pets' yes. graves. And, very frequently, yeah. yeah. And then um, you also have tourists who find this a fascinating place to come and see. Yeah, because of the Hollywood connection, I think, um, uh -huh. definitely is um, why they come and just, people are blown away. Because, oh my God, I didn't even know you were here. You Because know, we are this little sacred oasis right. in the middle of, well, you see the storage facilities and the office buildings, but we're still here. And when you go out there, when you drive by like human cemeteries, you know, it's, you know, it's nice. And you go through here, there's flowers and balloons and spinners, and it's just, it's amazing. It's a lot of sadness, yeah. but there's so much love, Yeah. so much love. So let's talk about some of the great Hollywood celebrity <laughs> dogs and cats and other creatures that are here. Mm -hmm. um, Valentino has has a pet here. Right? Yes, Kabar, uh, the what Doberman. What was Kabar? He was a Doberman, mm -hmm. and he was like Valentino's soulmate. I mean, they went everywhere together. It's just a stunning animal. And the legend has it that uh, when Valentino passed away, Kabar, who was in New York, began howling and just crying out loud. He ran away, he wouldn't eat, he would do all these things. He came back months later, uh, Valentino's brother, um, was at, at the house um, and he was just ragged and thin pads of his feet and he was just, he, he was devastated because he lost, you know, his soulmate. And he's out there. Uh, Kabar was buried actually by Valentino's brother. And um, when I first started working here about 
three years ago, there, somebody would leave white roses for Kabar at his grave all the time. You would always see white roses. Mm. And then after a while, they, they stopped. So the same bouquet was there. They were made of silk, um, but they started fading. And so I don't know who it was that kept up Kabar's you know, plot, but the white roses were always there, so that's Interesting cool. mystery. Mm -hmm. And then didn't Valentino's wife have uh, She does, uh, here? yeah, Jean Aker Valentino, um, or Acker, I don't know how to pronounce her name, um, but she does have her, her beloved is, is buried here named Bunky. And um, they were married, her and, and Valentino, for like I told you about three minutes. Oh. <laughs> but her pet is here too. There's just, there's a lot out there. Yeah. I mean, some of the names I see, it's like a roster of the, the who's who of Hollywood mm -hmm. in, mm -hmm. at that era. Yeah. And uh, I mean, Edward G. Robinson. Mm -hmm. uh, did he bury a dirty rat? <laughs> <laughs> no, not as far as I know. He has a dog, uh, right? P Peter Lorre is here, uh, oh. Persian cat. Right. And. Um, it's, it's, it's tricky because some of them don't have headstones. Some of our records will indicate that, yes, a headstone was purchased, but they're not there. Hmm. This could have been, you know, who knows, a fan Souvenir. coming around yeah, yeah. or they don't, you know, hey, I don't want this here because um, I don't want my pet to be, you know, like Alfred Hitchcock's pets are here, her Celium Terriers, two of which appeared in The Birds, by the way. Yes, in that, in that walk-on <laughs> that he does uh, yeah, in a lot uh -huh, of his films. Uh -huh. ah. and, um, but they don't have headstones, um, and I'm assuming for that reason, you know, because this is a sacred place, right. and it doesn't matter if you're super famous or not at all. I mean, this is where your soul has, has been laid to rest, really. Mm -hmm. And then you have a mausoleum as well. Yes, that's been here. That's the oldest structure on the property. Mm -hmm. It's fascinating when you go in there because as soon as you walk in that door and it's a small door it's a thin door they built them smaller back then you're stepping back in history I mean you are stepping back in time almost a hundred years it's, wow. it's, it's my favorite place on the property one of the more unusual animals not really unusual but the story behind the animal is room eight Mm -hmm. uh, room mm -hmm. eight was a cat that adopted an elementary school room mm -hmm. which was yeah. room eight right yeah room eight that's how they named him he was a stray and during uh, September, he, he wandered in and just w hung out with the kids and, and the lessons and the class and everything. And then when the final bell rang for summer, he disappeared. Nobody knew where he went. And then school's back in session in September. So was he. <laughs> and so it was, it's such a And this a went on for story. years and yeah, years, years right? and years. Mm -hmm. Pet and it was obviously a very good student, this cat. <laughs> I would think so. And then I gather when the, uh, when the cat passed, uh, the students all raised funds to pay for a headstone here at, at the at the park. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He's got one of the most magnificent <laughs> monuments out here. It was a good fundraising. It effort, really wasn't was. It? It's engraved on both sides. Wow. So yeah, he rated. Mm -hmm. Now you have some other curious creatures, not all dogs and cats, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What's the most unusual creature in here? The most unusual is his name is Are You Happy Harry? And he, he's the ashes of an alligator um, that were interred here in, God, the early 30s. And so his ashes are in the midst of a bird plot, a little teeny tiny bird, so of course he's happy. And yeah, so that's the most unusual one I've run across is the alligator. We have some iguanas, um, hamsters, guinea pigs, canaries, uh, a bearded dragon. You mentioned a parrot, too. John Juan Tio, uh, trained by Frank Ab Abella. Um, he's in the mausoleum, and he was the wisest parrot in New York. He's this great little African gray who knew like a, hundreds of commands and tricks and performed. He was, it, his is pretty awesome. You can still find him on YouTube. The footage is pretty grainy, but it, that's pretty cool to see. A hundred words, wow, this is better than some people I know. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. And I mean, I look around us and it, you know, these are very unusual to see caskets for pets. Mm -hmm. Some of them which are just spectacular, like this beautiful wood one, it's yes. just, just magnificent. When people come in and they are looking for plot, you still have plots available. Oh, yeah? yes we do. And so people can make arrangements and uh, they don't have to have a, a VIP or Hollywood status to get oh, in Oh gosh, no, 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 no. Everybody's, everybody's welcome, right. you know? And it's, it, the whole process is a lot like a human funeral. Yeah. I mean, some people will do uh, pre-needs, you know, they'll come and my pet isn't doing well or I want to be prepared for the future. They'll come, they'll pick out the plot. And then, you know, when the time does come, um, they come, you know, back to us and say, well, 
it's happened. So, you know, they pick out the casket and then they um, pick out the day, the time for their service. Um, and they have, uh, we have a viewing room and it's just like a human funeral. You go and you pay your respects and you can accompany the casket up to the grave site and, you know, people put in the dirt themselves. They say prayers. I mean, it's really... Pretty touching, yeah. huh? That's so great. Well, I, I want to go take a quick walk over to see Tawny, Absolutely. who is your famous MGM <laughs> lion who's mm -hmm. buried here. So uh, yeah. let's go take a quick little walk. So Stacey, this is probably the most popular headstone in the entire park, isn't it? Uh, absolutely. Uh, Tawny was also known as Leo the Lion, but Tawny was the MGM lion that was so iconic in every MGM film. But I gather they also used to take Tawny around the country to promote MGM. Uh, they would do affairs and events and mm -hmm. things like that. And they even had a biplane that they converted and built a cage in the middle where the lion would sit when they went flying around the country. Unfortunately, one day that biplane crashed in the Mojave Desert and the pilot died. But Tawny survived, at least for a little while longer. But ultimately, this is, uh, this is Tawny's place of rest and uh, it's a wonderful headstone. Big one, too. It, it really is. It's quite a landmark. That's the first question I get asked when people come here is like, where's the MGM lion? And it's like, well, you go trotting up all the way to the top of the hill and you can see uh, Tawny who's here with his memorial. And if you get really close on this little picture of him, you can see his little kitty cat buddy that is sitting on his room. And he allegedly that little kitty is buried here, too. Oh. No, they were buddies. Great. Well, Stacy, this has been such a great experience to be here. A beautiful, beautiful place to come and honor the animals we all love. And I love what you're doing here to keep, keep these uh, wonderful creatures in our hearts. Absolutely. Because they live forever. And uh, we're going to take a quick break, but uh, when we come back, we've got more Animal Zone. Stay tuned. Imagine, if you will, a zone. A zone where animals can talk to humans. Submitted for your amazement, the pet psychic, as we enter the animal zone. Today on Animal Zone, we've got a very special episode because we've got the pet psychic, Laura Stinchfield, and we have a dear, dear goddaughter of mine, Tiffany Lonsdale, who you've probably seen on lots of things, either theater, movies, TV. Uh, I remember there was SWAT, there was Ascension, there was Siren, where you played a very naughty uh, mermaid, as I recall. I did. <laughs> the villain, Tia. Yeah, but that was such a great show. And now you're in Animal Zone with your dog, Hugo. And Hugo, you're a very handsome boy. You are. And you've been very lucky. We're going to find out all about Hugo, but maybe you could first tell us a little about how Hugo came into your life. So I saw Hugo the day he was brought into the East LA Pound. And he was about eight months old. They'd found him as a stray. Uh, no other siblings or parents to be seen. They thought he'd probably been running around on his own for quite a few months. And in California, you have to wait a few days uh, just to make sure the owner doesn't claim any lost animals. So I waited four days, but I knew he was my soul. And um, so I went back four days later and adopted him. And he, um, he's just the best little guy. He's my best friend and I, I just love him so much. Aww. Yeah. That's so sweet. <laughs> What is he? He looks a little bit like a Jack Russell Terrier, and what are you exactly? What's in there? 
Well, I would have said um, up until recently that I would have thought it was border terrier mix, but I actually got a DNA testing done, and he came back as uh, Eskimo dog, Chihuahua, Shih Tzu, Cocker Spaniel, <laughs> and then Super Mutt, which are all these little elements of other dogs that they can't quite trace. So that's where I think the terrier lies. So he's the United Nations of rescue dogs. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's so great. And you've been together now? What, eight Almost, years? yeah, I would say eight and a half now, yeah. Wow. And what are some of the things he does I mean, that you love about him? He's so smart. He knows exactly what I'm saying. It doesn't mean he listens to me, but <laughs> he knows. He's a great running companion as well. He just loves running by the beach and uh, he can play soccer with a tennis ball on his own. Oh, so I'll just throw fun. the tennis ball down and he just has so much fun. And uh, he also chases the two cats that also live with us <laughs> as well. So that's a bit of an adventure. Um, but he's, uh, he's a real cuddle, cuddle companion. So he'll just jump up on any chair, any sofa, it doesn't matter whose house it is, and he just wants to be right by you the whole time. And does he sleep under the covers? He does. <laughs> Lucky boy. He does. Ever since he was a puppy, he burrows. I think that's where the terrier, yeah. you know, comes through. Right. Yes. Wow. But the chihuahua will do that too. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, do you want to so, tap into what he's yeah, speaking? Yeah, so Hugo, do you know that I can hear you? He says, my mom's been telling me. And uh, what do you want to, what do you want to say? You've been thinking about what you want to say to your mom? He wants to know how many times he's going to go on a plane and is this going to happen soon? Wow. Are you going on a plane? Um, if I book a next big acting job somewhere, yes. So maybe it's in the stars, who knows? Oh. Does he so travel Mom's with you? So not planning a, oh he does. So have you been not working because of COVID? Oh, so maybe he's just saying like, when are we getting back to work? Maybe. So is that what you're trying to say? Is like when he, well eventually, yeah, mom will get back to work and you'll go again. So you like traveling with mom? You like it when you go? You want to be featured more? Oh, do you know what he's talking about? Do you like put him on social media or something? Oh, so he's thinking of social media ideas? This is extraordinary. <laughs> I didn't realize he was such a uh, such a ham. <laughs> but he does want to dance with you, and I think you have you've tra trained him to do a little bit of a dance. Don't have you? you? He can do a little one, yeah. Um, so you've done. You're gonna do it for us? Well, he. Let's see it. I never actually trained him. <laughs> he did this when he was a puppy, and he's just kept it up the whole time. Oh, neat. And so I guess I can take credit for it, but oh I gosh, absolutely I did nothing. Oh my God, maybe you should do freestyle with him. I mean, That's I've... like a sport. You should do that with him. Really? Yeah. I don't even know what that yeah, is. It's called freestyle. Yeah. Look it up. Okay. Yeah. You ready to dance, Betty? Oh, look at that. Wow. Yay. Wow. Bravo. Now you, you have to add a spin in there. Okay. <laughs> Let's spin together. Ready? <laughs> there we go. That's so neat. So how often do you do that with him? He'll do it, I mean, 10 times a day. You oh, know? he does. So he wants you to do a routine with him. He wants you to make it more complicated. Oh, okay. We can do that. The next Fred Astaire. Right? Yeah, I mean, he's he's got the energy and s the attention span, and he's so bright. Well, gosh, it's so great to have you. Thank you, Hugo, for coming. <laughs> and Laura, always a great pleasure. Thank you for oh, all your so insights. Fun. And Tiffany, what a treat. Thank, Thank you for you. coming on Animal Zone, and uh, we hope you'll get Hugo and you back on dancing soon. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back with more Animal Zone. Well, today on Animal Zone, we're going to take a hike. Well, a little hike here at the Santa Barbara Humane Society, their Santa Barbara campus. We've got Carrie Burns, who's the CEO, Sam Blankenship, who's a shelter manager, and Princess, who's our walking dog, right? How old is Princess? She's eight years old. Well, you know, that's the first question I would have. If someone's thinking about going on a hike with their dog, how old can they be when you go on a hike? What's the limit? I don't know if the age has a limit, per se. I think it's more about just knowing your dog, knowing it's 
its physical capabilities and not pushing it too hard for them if, if, if they can't do long strolls. I mean, if, I, if, I, if we take Princess out on a, she's eight, take her up on a, one of the hills here in the Santa Barbara area, some great hiking trails, but how long would you take her out, just knowing the dog? This dog in particular, um, you know, I, could, I, I wouldn't go too far into the neck of the woods where I'd have a long stroll back. I'd probably maybe do 30, 40 minutes one way and see how she was doing and then turn around. Um, but obviously important to have the right supplies um, in case she does get tired and she needs her own water source and she needs food to energize. So I noticed when I used to take my Mikey Pitbull yes. for a walk, Mikey would go for a while and then all of a sudden he'd just start looking for shade to lie down in. Yeah. I guess that's an indication it's time to go yeah. back. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and it's it's important that you stop and do you know, water breaks, just like humans need water breaks. Don't wait until their tongue is hanging all the way out or until you're like, you know, breathing really heavy. Stop, take your time. If it's a beautiful day out, which is probably why you're hiking, take your breaks, enjoy your animal, enjoy the scenery, and make sure you do, you definitely take your water break. How much water would you take with you on a hike? Me, I like to drink a lot of, oh, you're talking about the dog, <laughs> right. So, you know, I would take- One of those five gallon bottles? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Depending on the length of the hike, mm -hmm. um, you know, some dogs drink more than others. So make sure that whatever, uh, you know, double the amount of water you would give them in a bowl right. and take that on the hike with you. And I've seen those nifty things where you have the water bottle and actually a little bowl that it pours into. Those are fantastic, if the dogs will drink out of it. So don't take that on the hike and just assume that, oh look, they're going to drink out of this because it might be something new to them. Yeah. Practice using that before you go on the hike, otherwise they might be like, what is it? I don't want to drink. Right. Now, talking about the foothills here in Santa Barbara, we have some beautiful hikes, but we also have some large rattlesnakes. Yep. What happens when you're on a narrow trail and your dog runs into a rattlesnake? You just lay down like this and the rattlesnake goes away. <laughs> you just have to be cautious of what your dog's looking into and, 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 and know how rattlesnakes spend their days and where they might be and don't have the dog looking into holes that are inquisitive by nature, but you want to curb some of that investigation just because they might be peeking their head into area they shouldn't be. Two important things with that is keep your dog on leash. There are leash laws um, in most cities and counties and stay on trail. Um, and not staying on trail is not only good for the environment, but it's more it's safety for your dog and for yourself. Well, and if you're going up a trail and you see a dog with another owner coming down the trail, is there any protocol? Do you have to, uh, do you have priority going up or do, do you just there's not, no one has right of way, so to speak, but it's good just to communicate. If you have a dog that you know is prone to be reactive or you have a dog that's shy, you, know, you can communicate that or what side the dog is walking, you're walking on. If the dog's coming and your dog's nervous, keep your dog on the right side so you are a buffer between the other dog. Um, and yeah, again, ideally both dogs on leash and just communication. Because you know they're both really friendly dogs, they may engage in play and if they look like they're are friendly enough, there's no, no harm in it. You right. know, and it's okay to ask somebody. I had a dog that wasn't dog friendly, but I loved hiking with her. And I would say, my dog is not dog friendly. And I would bring her in just a little bit. And so that person knew ahead of time, don't let your dog just run over to my dog. And it's a respect and courtesy. You know, it's okay to talk to somebody on the hiking trail, especially when you have concerns about your dog, because you still want to get out and enjoy the weather. Gosh, thank you both for uh, being with us and giving all those insights uh, here on Animal Zone. I'm going to go take a hike now. <laughs> we'll be right back after these words. Weren't there some amazing four-footed creatures? And they're two-footed caretakers. Those of you who adopt and foster rescue animals, you're the real heroes. And you know what? Those animals give you the greatest gift of all, the gift of unconditional love. If you want to know more about animal adoptions and animal experts, please go to our website, animalzone.org, and I hope you'll join us next time, right here on Animal Zone. Never was a friend so true, never was a friend like you. Canine, you're my best friend. Canine of mine, friend for all time. So glad you're my best friend Through thick and thin We'll see things through Canine of mine, so true Did I find you or did you find me? Either way it's still serendipity 
When I saw you, it was plain to see You weren't just another lassie Wanna be your canine of mine Friend for all time I'm so glad you're my best friend